And right here is the site in Charleston, a time lapse over the course of 10 minutes from cloudy to a torrential downpour, then back to cloudy. And just below, there is Virginia Street in downtown with a wall of rain rolling in from the west. And those winds clocking in at up at 100 miles per hour in some spots as the warnings, alerts and watches blanketed the area. A wave of rain and wind hit the state capitol and left it as fast as it came. And that fast moving storm leaving behind a wave of destruction with roofs torn off and billboards knocked down. Here's video from our Sky Team drone showing the Gestamp building in South Charleston torn apart. Our meteorologists have been tracking all of this throughout the day. Yeah, and as the governor calls a state of emergency in four counties, let's go straight to Doug Harlow with what he sees ahead of us. Doug. Well, unfortunately, I wish I could say we've, you know, worse is behind us. For a lot of us, it probably is, but not for everybody, because there is still a risk for some severe weather later on tonight, especially, I think, across our western viewing area, where we're starting to see some big storms near Cincinnati, Louisville. Some of those may graze our southeastern Ohio counties, northern Kentucky counties later on this evening. Right now, it's pretty calm out there, but the weather alert remains in effect. More storms tonight, even areas that maybe see sub-severe storms, it could get a little bit rowdy again as the cold front crosses. The Tornado risk continues, especially west of the Ohio River and just about anywhere. There could be some spot flooding out there. We've had downpours and we've got more on the way. Inc incredible. You'd think this was an error. 92 mile an hour wind gusts at Tri-State Airport. That actually happened earlier this morning. 60 mile an hour gusts at Jaeger Airport. Incredible. These are stronger gusts than what we had in the duratio and back in 2012. And this was a duratio. I'll talk about that in a little bit later on in the show. No active warnings for us. What concerns me is that we've got severe thunderstorm and tornado warnings back to the west from Cincinnati to Louisville. And a tornado watch that includes Lewis, Scioto counties until 10 o'clock, southeastern Kentucky counties until until 8, and the rest of us are under a flood watch through the remainder of tonight. We've just got some garden variety showers pushing up through the cold fields right now, so Huntington Charleston will get a bit more rain the next hour or two, but nothing severe. It's that line back to the west, and I'm watching that to kind of skirt southeastern Ohio, northern Kentucky as we get closer to and after sundown. So I think 8, 9 o'clock. Vanceburg, Portsmouth, on up toward Athens. That's a zone there that has my attention, potentially for some storms that could produce some tornadoes. Now, while that will weaken later tonight, it can still produce gusty winds through the overnight hours for many of us as a cold front crosses, and then things will settle down, but it's going to get a whole lot colder for the rest of this week. And we'll detail that in just a bit. And team coverage for you right now across the area. Cleanup is underway, and as Doug just said, the severe threat isn't over just yet. We start with Anna Saunders in Dunbar, where a huge billboard went down and destroyed a car. Anna, what can you tell us? Yeah, right now, guys, a lot of a lot of activity going on this evening. A lot of people here, crews working, trying to literally take this thing apart piece by piece. It's a scene that sort of takes your breath away with a chilling story to go with it. Thankfully, no one was hurt, but the man who had his car crushed was just in it and had come inside when the storm came in. Take a look at some of this video that I shot here earlier today. This is Ronnie Howard's car. He works at the Geno's Tutors here and had just finished up his break, stepped inside, and the storm came. He said the storm itself was so loud, they just could hear debris hitting the building while they were taking shelter. Then his co-workers came in and told him the billboard had fallen on his car. No one was injured, but still a giant mess that still has Fairlawn shut down and likely will for the next few days. Look at that. It's, it's a tin can. No repair can fix that. It's totally gone. Now, this was also a chaotic time for first responders. Just to give you an idea here in Dunbar, around the time this happened, the tractor trailer overturned on 64, which they also had to respond to, along with other crashes and damage. And like I mentioned earlier, a lot of loud activity happening here tonight as they start to take this thing apart. Just a few moments ago, a crew came in and actually lifted part of the billboard up so they could get the car out from underneath it. So the car has since been towed away here tonight, but this will be a mess for a while. Live in Dunbar, Anna Saunders, Eyewitness News. Anna, thank you. And meteorologist Dante Ricky is in Proctorville, Ohio, where they're dealing with significant damage to their fire department and a school. Dante, what can you tell us? Yes, severe thunderstorms and the damaging wind gusts from them impact homes, structures, and even large buildings. I'm here at the Fairland West 
Elementary School in Proctorville, Lawrence County, Ohio, where part of the roof was blown off of this building. Now look up here behind me. See the bricks up there at the top? Well, a good portion of the roof was just ripped away. And this has caused significant damage to the building and will likely need extensive repair. Now the good news, this happened during the regularly scheduled spring break. So no students or school in session at the time, but you need to be able to find your safe spot in a building if indeed a tornado or strong gusty wind strike your area. Now, from the back of the building, a lot of debris has also been scattered across the property. The National Weather Service office in Charleston will be sending a storm damage survey team to Proctorville, as well as several other locations across our region to determine if the damage was in fact done by that of a tornado or just straight line wind gusts as well. Now, Proctorville hit very hard by the extensive wind damage here in these thunderstorms that came through this morning, and part of that actually damaged the roof and building of a volunteer fire department. We spoke with Matthew Smith, the assistant chief of Proctorville Volunteer Fire Department, and he told us how this impacted not only his operation, but also some of the people who were there at the time of the storm. They was in the office area. They heard crashing. They sh they they self and they had two of their children here with them. Shoved them in the bathroom. Rode the storm out. It virtually picked the roof off our back bay and set it on one of our members' garage and house. For for us in this part of the county, this is one of the worst that I've seen, other than high water. And the good news, no injuries reported within the Proctorville Volunteer Fire Department, but they will need a brand new firehouse building as a result of the storm damages here earlier today. In Lawrence County, Ohio, I'm meteorologist Dante Ricky for Eyewitness News. And here in Charleston, crews are busy clearing debris and trying to repair a lot of damage. And Daniel Burbank is on the city's west side with an up-close look for us live. Daniel. Well, Dave, I mean, from one Kanawha County billboard to another, this was another dramatic sight. Mother Nature sparing nothing in its path. There's large pieces of glass. I mean, there's so much debris all on top of this building here. And this is just some of the sites that we've seen here. In fact, the person who owns this was in the process of remodeling, hoping, hoping to open this soon. We could see this was powerful enough to bend this steel structure here. Now, Kanawha County is in a state of emergency. The Kanawha County Commission earlier asking Governor Justice to issue that emergency because of this morning's damage and with the potential for more severe weather on the way. So teachers and students at Piedmont Elementary say that this is a perfect example for kids to understand the importance of taking these tornado warnings seriously. Now, every school in the county sheltered in place when the sirens blared several times around the 11 o'clock hour. Take a listen to what the instructor had to say. We are all safe, all the kids are safe, Kanawha County Schools practices for situations like this. Everyone is very calm, the kids have been very calm today, and everything is under control. Metro 911 telling us they've received hundreds of calls, at least 500, since 1045 this morning. That ranged from structural collapses in downtown Charleston, entrapments, vehicle wrecks. We saw uh, several of those images of the tractor trailers on the interstate overturned, fires, fallen trees, and of course downed billboards. I'm told there's been reports of tornado touchdowns in the western portion of Kanawha County. Now that cannot officially be confirmed until a National Weather Service team sends their experts making those decisions, just as meteorologist Dante Ricky and Doug Harlow, all of our meteorologists have discussed. Now, I'm also getting word that the West Virginia Department of Education canceled all Kanawha County schools tomorrow. We're going to continue to follow that angle to this story as well. Live in Charleston, Daniel Burbank, Eyewitness News. All right, Daniel, a lot of the schools probably just don't have power either. There's over 100,000 in our viewing area without power right now. Charleston, nearly 60,000 without power there. So as you head towards Kanawha County, 56,000 without power within, within uh, Kanawha County, over 7,000 without power as you're heading over towards Putnam County, Cabell County, over 11,000 without power there. Then you go to some of these smaller counties like Boone County, 3,000 without power in Boone County, a lower populated county there. That's a big number uh, for that county. Lawrence County, Ohio, another area where you 
just saw meteorologist Dante Ricky in Proctorville. Over 13,000 without power in Lawrence County, Ohio. And as you head over towards Boyd County, Kentucky, over 5,000 without power there. I want to head over to the billboard and talk to you about how you could stay safe during power outages, especially when it comes down to power lines being knocked down. You want to stay 30 feet away from pa down power lines and you want to report anytime you see a down power line. Now, most of the power outages have been reported already, but again, still would like to report that to uh, Appalachian Power for sure. You don't want to touch any down power lines. You always want to assume that any down power lines are energized or active. They can be very dangerous. Don't even attempt to move them. Even if you're using something that you would think wouldn't be conducive of the electricity there, you still don't want to touch it. You just want to stay away from it. Leave it to the professionals. Looking at some of the power outage restoration times that are being estimated by AEP, they expect to have Boone, Logan, Mingo, and Raleigh County back in power by 11 o'clock tomorrow. And then Cabell, Clay, Fayette, Greenbrier County, Jackson, Canal, Lincoln, Mason, Nicholas, Putnam, and Roan, including in Wayne County as well. They expect to have those counties back in power two days from now by 11 o'clock on Thursday. Thank you, Brandon. We're tracking more damage in our area after severe storms and tornado warnings cover the mid-Ohio Valley. All that and more is coming up. And while the heaviest damage seemed to come along the I-64 corridor, the Mid-Ohio Valley did not get a pass. Not at all. And Eyewitness News senior reporter Bob Aaron, who actually lives in Jackson County, ran into some serious weather trouble too close to home. Heavy late morning rains were pushed by damaging winds in Jackson, Wood, and Wood counties. The north end of Ravenswood locked some serious damage, including this house crushed by a large tree. The damage didn't stop with the tree fall. The back side of the house, we've got, you know, obviously we've lost the garage. There's water coming down into our laundry room over there, and it's dripping down into our family room, which is directly across in the back of the house. A few blocks away and another massive tree that stood for decades went down, but this one only took out a neighbor's flagpole. I would have had better weather coverage this day if I'd stayed home. The storm that roared through Ravenswood hit my yard and neighborhood. My damage, just a five-year-old tree. But not far away, a utility trailer was tossed like a toy and part of the roof and siding torn off a house. Things were flopping up and down. Um, the wind was blowing really hard. I thought the house was gonna go, but this part, the back part of my roof blew off, and um, but we were all pretty scared. Emergency crews were kept busy responding to downed power lines, trees blocking roads, and damage to buildings. In Ravenswood, Bob Aaron, Eyewitness News. All right, thank you, Bob. And you know, some people say they saw a tornado in Ravenswood, but the wind damage came during a radar-generated tornado warning late Tuesday morning. And the National Weather Service will be out surveying the damage in the coming days and will likely be seeing some confirmed tornadoes. All because of this powerhouse storm system in the Great Lakes pushing a front overnight tonight. So we're still on alert for severe weather until that front crosses. Then we're back to winter Wednesday and especially Thursday and Friday. Rain, sleet, snow showers, cold temps and gusty winds. We'll detail that and winter will clear back out and calm down coming up next. Well, a derecho is defined by a storm line that covers at least 240 miles with wind gusts of roughly about 60 miles an hour or greater along its path, frequently noted. And I think this one qualifies. The storm line this morning started west of Lexington, and this was the path of damage starting all the way back there, going all the way into western Virginia before it fell apart, basically paralleling I-64. That's 335 miles right there. So, you know, when all is said and done, this is reclassified, it will go down as a derecho and every bit as strong, if not stronger than the one back in 2012. Of course, that was in summer and was followed by two weeks of 100 degree temps. This one's going to be followed by cold instead, and it's happening in early April. The tree's not fully leafed out, so that helped a little bit. But in this case, I think the winds 
and the meteorological factors were actually stronger than the one back in 2012. Powerhouse storm system in the Great Lakes. This is a bad setup, and that's what we were worried about all day yesterday. But it was the morning storm line that really kind of took center stage and hopefully robs the second half of this storm system a little bit of energy for most of us. We've got some showers crossing into Huntington again. Logan coming up through Charleston. We'll get a little bit of rain falling. This is pretty weak stuff, though. A lot of the atmosphere in West Virginia is kind of worked over. So, yes, showers, maybe a rumble. Doesn't look like too much for the next few hours. What has my attention, there's no active warnings here, but we have active warnings, tornado and severe thunderstorm from Cincinnati down east of Louisville. And these are moving on off to the east. So I'm watching that line there. That's for me out ahead of the actual cold front. Still a ways from us, but in Lewis County, Scioto County, Jackson, Vinton, Carter, Greenup, these zones right out in here in particular, we're going to watch out for that. Hopefully that line weakens as the sun begins to set. We lose some of the heating of the day. Also, the atmosphere a little more worked over here. But that's the zone that bears watching. We could still have some tornado warnings go up, especially out in those counties, even after sundown. Futurecast shows you know, 8, 9 o'clock is when some of those cells could be approaching Vanceburg, Portsmouth area here. So we'll be keeping you updated. If there's a tornado warning, we're going to be breaking in that for tonight's programming. From there, we'll start crossing the Ohio River closer to midnight. I think at that point, these storms are unlikely to produce tornadoes. But they could still produce gusty winds into the overnight as the cold front crosses. I mean, that's a pretty you know, rough look. 2, 3 in the morning, that's the front. That could be a gusty line of some rain at least coming through here overnight. We'll start tomorrow with some leftover showers, which will taper down. Temps will keep falling. We may start at 50, 55 degrees and fall into the 40s for a time tomorrow morning. Only make it back up to about 50 or so in the afternoon. I think we'll have a few more scattered showers popping up. Non-severe, but maybe some pea-sized hail with some of these cells as they push through. That's a reinforcing shot of colder air. So on Thursday, we're lucky to get much above 40. Rain showers, sleet. Snow in the mountains that will stick and accumulate quite a bit up in the highest spots, but just overall, it's a nasty look. Gusty winds. Get the winter jackets ready here. It is going to be cold. So for folks without power, especially at night, 30s, 20s, you know, that's going to be a concern. Hopefully, we can get everybody back online. Weekend looks to calm down. We'll have some sun. It's just chilly. And then we'll get back into the 60s, and it looks like decent weather to start next week, including for the solar eclipse Monday. A state of emergency through Kentucky and damage reported in 19 counties. We look at the hardest hit areas in Kentucky and Charleston coming up. Eyewitness News Guy Team is sponsored by GoMart. We continue to track the storm damage around our area after those severe but speedy storms today. Yeah, let's take a quick look at what we've seen and some spots hit the hardest. Now, over at the Huntington Mall in Barbersville, cinder blocks scattered across the parking lot you see right there in front of the Shoe Carnival store. Those heavy winds also tore off the roof at Pet Supplies Plus right near the mall. And it's hard to tell here, but that thing up there stuck in the power lines is a mangled trampoline. Here's a tractor trailer that flipped over. It was on the McCorkle exit in Jefferson. And this was in Huntington, where part of a roof was blown off a building. And here's more of the damage right here in Charleston. This picture taken by our very own Daniel Burbank with a huge tree completely brought, blocking the road over an institute. The side of this house completely destroyed by a falling tree. Just more examples of how powerful the winds are as they were enough to knock it over. And a car in South Hills along Spring Road hit by a falling tree taking costly damage among many other parked cars around that area. And before the storm slammed the Kanawha Valley, it left a path of destruction across eastern Kentucky. One of the hardest hit areas was the Ironville community of Boyne County, where the storm uprooted trees and split a home in half and flipped a mobile home. Witnesses tell us they saw what looked like a funnel cloud traveling down the road, damaging trailers <clears throat> in a mobile home park. It was a frightening situation for for old and young alike. It was scary. Um, I never had an intense storm like this before. It was very, just very intense, very crazy. Real scary, to be honest with you. Real, I've seen combat and everything else, but this scared the crap out of me. And, and the silver lining and miracle from the storm, officials say there was no loss of life and one lady suffered a minor injury. 
Well, coming up here on Eyewitness News next, we have one final look at your forecast with Chief Meteorologist Doug Harlow to see what's up.